Welcome back to another wonderful time together. You know, it's always a joy whenever we have the opportunity to just look into the perfect law of liberty and study the word of life together. It is always a privilege. It's always a privilege. Today is our 11th month anniversary. This God who set up PBC, who founded PBC, who owns PBC, who shepherds and pastors PBC, who guides us point in time into all truth. He has kept us thus far. And we want to take a moment before we go into anything right here, right now, to simply say, thank you, Jesus. 11 months of grace, 11 months of growth, 11 months of impact, 11 months of following the way of Jesus as a church family globally. Thank you, Father, for your courage. Thank you for your sustenance. Thank you for your provisions. Thank you for prevailing power <laughs> made available unto us. Thank you because the word of God is growing mightily and it is prevailing. Jesus Christ, my God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We are grateful. We give you praise. Please put it in the chat box. Don't just look at me. Don't just watch me. I am not supposed to be a figure you're watching. I, this is not TV. This is the service of the Most High God. You are in the presence of God. This is literally a church service. You might as well give God your praise. And the way you do it in an online medium is literally to register your praise in the chat box. And that is what counts. This chat box is not our chat box. It is the chat box of God. So thank Him. Let heaven know. Let it be recorded that God saw your thanksgiving. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Transcribe your praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you for your help. Thank you for great grace we have enjoyed as a church. Thank you for being our Ebenezer, God. Thank you, Father. May your name be praised forevermore. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Psalms 100 and verse 4. Enter into the courts of the Lord God with praise. Lift up your hands, lift up your voice, lift up your hearts and bless his name. Magnify the Lord with me. Psalms 34 and verse 3. Let us exhort his name together. This God has been good to us. This God has been gracious to us. I will say of the Lord. PBC will say of the Lord. Psalms 91 and verse 2. You are our refuge. You are our fortress. Our God in you we will trust. We thank you. We hallow you. We bless your name. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen and amen. I'm excited. Next month, oh, by the grace of God, PBC will be turning one year old. One year old. And this church has continued to grow in leaps and in bounds. By the grace of God, today we are, we are in multiple geographies and multiple countries and multiple regions and continents of the world. Only to the glory of God. Doing one single task. Raising true disciples and witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ across the nations of the earth. By the grace of God, we will not relent on our purpose as God continues to give us the grace and as we continue to be helped by the Holy Spirit. Last week, you will recall, we began an incredible series and that series was on times and seasons. Times and seasons. I mean, look at this. It's a beautiful weather right here. Amazing weather. We are on the cusp of spring and summer and it's amazing, the sun is giving me a wonderful sort of like tan right now. I don't, I don't know whether or not like people of my skin color actually could tan, but the sun is actually like giving me a beautiful tan right here. The weather is fantastic, the birds are chipping. It's great. We are in a beautiful season even now. Times and seasons. Times and seasons. Times and seasons is uh, the topic of the ongoing series in the prevailing and the borderless church. Last week, by the grace of God, we went through part one. And part one was the genesis of time. We looked at how time was created, the origin of time, where time began from, and, and how to spend time, you know, in the right manner. Today, by the grace of God, we're going to be going into part two of this month long series in the month of may and the topic of part two is you're gonna love this time versus eternity 
time versus eternity time versus eternity put it in the chat box what is the topic of today's part two teaching on the broad series times and seasons what is the topic of today's part two teaching time versus eternity it is good for you to put these things in the chat box because that way you remember you remember this is like you taking notes in your notepad when you go to church you will retain these things if you actually transcribe it down time versus eternity time versus eternity part two i want to read the word of the lord in isaiah 57 and verse 15a isaiah 57 and verse 15a isaiah 57 and verse 15a the new living translation of scripture it says this the high and lofty one capital o if you have a good bible the high and lofty one capital o n e who lives in eternity boom right there so we already see something amazing that there is one who is called the high and lofty one check and that one lives not in time but he lives in eternity check so then we're going to have to ask ourselves a couple of questions who is this high and lofty one who lives in eternity who is he who is this person this character let us pray <laughs> holy spirit of the living god you are authorship personified all inspiration is from you all insight all revelation all illumination is from you put your word in my mouth my partner of partners senior partner of life release it like a sword let it pierce through the dividing of the soul and spirit let it provoke us all unto good works and let it point us to the way of the high and lofty one jesus the christ in jesus name i have prayed amen and amen isaiah 57 and verse 15 a nlt the high and lofty one who lives in eternity <laughs> this is amazing stuff so there is a high and lofty one we've established that and we've also established that this high and lofty one lives in eternity it's amazing high and lofty one lives in eternity high and lofty one lives in eternity it's amazing so we've established two very fundamental facts and truths by the way from that phrase the high and lofty one who lives in eternity so then the question is let us double click on this who is this high and lofty one well don't look too far away it tells you who it is revelation 1 and verse 8 revelation 1 and verse 8 the high and lofty one introduces himself the high and lofty one introduces himself and it says this i am alpha which means starting the beginning i am omega kjv the beginning and the ending the one who is uh, he is just is he is presently presently continuous the one who is self-contained eternally relevant the one who was and the one who is to come those are the three dimensions of eternity never ending continuum the almighty god that god is the high and lofty one and that god does not live in time he lives in eternity he dwells in eternity he does not live in time he dwells in eternity jesus is lord so now that we've established that and we understand who we were speaking and we know who we're talking about in isaiah 57 and verse 15 a the high and lofty one who dwells in eternity he doesn't live in time he created time we established that last week he stepped out of time and he lives in eternity the god who made time but stepped out of time controls time and then ordains time and commissions time god to him that high and lofty one the almighty god to him alone be all the glory honor dominion and power now and forevermore this is amazing stuff amazing stuff dimensions of time you know we've talked about chronos we've talked about kairos now we're talking about the difference between time and eternity beautiful stuff we told you this in genesis 1 1 it says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth 
and last week the holy spirit revealed unto us what that scripture really means it means in the beginning of time god created the heavens and the earth so if in the beginning of time god created the heavens and the earth what was before the beginning of time <laughs> you can see the answer right there the answer is eternity before time was eternity after time will end because time will end eternity remains so in between eternity is time this is exciting revelation from the holy ghost in between eternity is time before time began was a vast expanse of eternity after time will end remains a vast continuum of eternity so in between eternity is time so dare i say this that time is a subset of eternity that is the topic of today's teaching and today's word from the king of glory the high and lofty one who dwells in eternity he's telling me as a messenger to tell you that you begin to, you got to begin to understand the difference between time and eternity time versus eternity time is a subset of eternity a lifetime is defined as the time between birth and death the time between birth and death is what we've come to know as a lifetime ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 2 ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 2 the word of god says there is a time to be born and there is a time to die there is a time to be born and there is a time to die in between birth time and death time is what we call lifetime constructs of time before we go into the difference between time and eternity i want to show you an incredible revelation and this blew my mind when the holy spirit pointed this to me as i was looking into the word of god for this particular series look at this the jurisdiction of time not eternity the jurisdiction of time is the earth not eternity but time the jurisdiction and the power of time is this earth look at this time only has rule under heaven look at this Ex ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1 ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1 it says this to everything there is a season come on and a time to every purpose under heaven in heaven time doesn't have control and rule in heaven time doesn't have dominance because that's where god tabernacles but under heaven carias kapalias here on earth that is where time has power to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven so you see the dominion of time is on the earth the rulership and the power of time is on the earth it is under heaven that time has a word and a voice genesis 8 and verse 22 genesis 8 and verse 22 look at this it says as long as the earth not the heaven not eternity as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest time see time only has jurisdiction and rule and governance under heaven revelation <laughs> insight under heaven we read the word of god too fast under heaven is where time has rule so very quickly let us go into a couple of differences between time and eternity time versus eternity time versus eternity time is the internship while you're here eternity is the full-time offer <laughs> Time is the internship. Eternity is the full-time offer. Who goes to a job and is so stuck in the internship that they're not thinking about the full-time offer? I pray you will use your time wisely so that you can get a full-time offer into eternity with God. For those of you who do summer internships on Wall Street, in law firms, in medical practices, in media, in sports, in athletics, wherever you are in whatever your field may be i pray you will be focused on securing the full-time offer versus just living up your life in a very prodigal manner in the internship 
Time is the internship. Eternity is the full-time offer. Time is finite. Finite. Eternity is infinite. Time is finite. Eternity is infinite. The word finite is from the same root word we get the word finish. Finite. Finish. In French, it is called c'est fini. It is finished. It is completed. It is done. Time is finite. Eternity is infinite. This message that I am releasing to you by the grace of God will soon be over. Why? Because I am time stamped on this side of time and eternity. I am under heaven. So even though the word of God is flowing with efficacy and power, it is still time stamped. Why? We are under heaven and time has rulership and governance here. Everything is timed. Service begins at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Timed. 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 It's finite. Eternity, though, is infinite. Glory to God forevermore. Time has a beginning and it has an ending. Eternity does not have a beginning and eternity does not have an ending. Time has a beginning. Time has an ending. Eternity does not have a beginning and it does not have an ending. The Bible says in John chapter 8 and verse 58. John 8, 58, KJV. One of my favorite scriptures of authority. This was Jesus Christ exercising what I call a boss move. It says, verily, verily, I say unto you, John 8, 58, KJV. Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Pai Karas Vitalias. Oh, this is exciting. I mean, you would have thought that that is wrong English. It is grammatically wrong and syntax-wise, it is broken. Because you, this is what they taught us in English language, in grammar, conjugation of tenses. You would have expected it to say that before Abraham was, I was existing. That would have been the right thing to say. But no, 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 no. It absolutely flawed the grammatical syntax because there was a revelation there. It says before Abraham was, I am absolutely myself contained in present continuous glory i am a continuum i am eternity personified i am the one who is i am the one who was i am the one who will always be i just am i am i am that i am i am god the high and lofty one who dwells in eternity he is Hebrews 11, 6, For without faith it is impossible to please God because they that come to God must believe that He is a continuum of eternity. He doesn't have a beginning and doesn't have an ending. In fact, He is the beginning. He is the ending. He is Alpha. He is Omega. He is. Uh, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. He would have expected him to say, before Abraham was, I was in existence. He says, no, 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 no. This is not a matter of present, past, and future. With me, I just am. I am eternity. I am eternal. Glory to God. He doesn't have a beginning and doesn't have an ending. Before time, God is. After time, God is. <laughs> now, time is bound and limited. You got to understand this. This is a very important constru construct. Time is bound and time is limited. Whenever you see the constructs of Kronos, we've established the two dimensions of time. There is Kronos, time, and then there is Kairos time. Kronos is where you get the word chronology from. Kairos is opportune moment. Kronos time and Kairos time. Kronos time and Kairos time. Now, time is bound. All time dimensions are bound. Eternity is boundless. It is limitless. It is a forever continuum. That's why whenever you see the matters of God in the Holy Word of God in Scripture, it is always defined using phrases and constructs of a forever continuum. Eternity is always describing God in a forever continuum. Let me show you a few examples. Whenever you look at the Word of God, the Scriptures, the Holy Word of God, anything that has to do with God, the Trinity, the Godhead, the word of God, you would notice that it is always with an element of eternal character. Look at this for example. Psalms 119 and verse 89. Psalms 119 and verse 89. Forever, O oh God.
God. Not, 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 not in a moment. Not at some point. Forever. It doesn't stop being settled. Forever, oh God. Your word. The word of the higher lofty one. It is settled. It is a forever time. That is eternity. John 3, 16. Very common scripture. He says, for God, the higher lofty one, who loved the world, who dwells in eternity, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in that son, capital S, the high and lofty one, the person will translate from time dimensions and will not perish, but rather will have eternal, everlasting, eternal, everlasting life, eternity, eternity, eternity. First Timothy 1.17, KJV, First Timothy 1.17, KJV, it says, now unto the king, eternal, eternal, this is a God who is limitless, he is boundless, eternity is different from time, immortal, invincible, there is an eternal God who sits on the throne and rules in the affairs of men to that king eternal we give all the praise and glory isaiah 57 and verse 15 to the one who lives forever high and lofty who lives forever 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 this is a god of eternal grace isaiah chapter 9 6 to 7 isaiah 9 6 to 7 he says of the increase of his kingdom and his government and peace there shall be no end eternity eternal characteristics of the god of heaven Time versus eternity. Time versus eternity. I hope you're following. And then finally, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 14. Amplified classic. It says this. <laughs> this is amazing stuff. It says, I know this, that whatever, whatever, whatever that God does is forever. It is, it is, it is eternal. Eternal. It is forever. It endures forever. Now, as I begin to bring this to a close, as I begin to bring this to a close, there is a verse of scripture that ties time and eternity together in a very beautiful way. In a very beautiful way. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. Amplified classic. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 11. I, I said to God, God, you got to give me a word of scripture that ties time and eternity together and the lord said ask no more here it is ecclesiastes 3 11. now here's the funny part a lot of us actually know the first part of that scripture but we don't know the second part of it ecclesiastes 3 11. it says this god has made everything beautiful in its time he has also planted eternity in men's hearts and minds now this is a divinely implanted sense of purpose he has also planted eternity in the hearts of men this is the reason why it doesn't matter what you do on earth it doesn't matter what you find it doesn't matter how much money you make it doesn't matter how much you travel it doesn't matter where you go whatever you use to substitute the place of god in your heart will not work money drugs men women power titles influence degrees academics academia positions of authority whatever you use to try to replace that eternal huge god-sized hole that god planted in the heart of man by himself it cannot work only god can fit the god-sized hole because he is eternal let me invite you if you're watching if you do not yet know jesus christ and you want to begin to live with a mindset focused on eternity not just on time it will be my privilege to lead you to that god you can just repeat after me and say lord jesus i thank you i thank you for loving me i know that you're the high and lofty one who dwells in eternity i choose today wisely by the help of your spirit to surrender to you i believe and i confess my sins I know that I am a sinner and my ways have not been right with you. I have been living life on my own terms and not on your terms. I surrender. Come into my heart. Forgive me. I repent of my sins. And I accept Jesus Christ, the high and lofty one, the eternal God who dwells in eternity, into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I pray, Lord, that you please show me the way. Teach me how to live. Teach me how to walk write my name in the book of life plant me in your custody and never let me go 
in Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer point, congratulations because you are saved and you've just secured a place in eternity. Glory to God forevermore. Click the link that is being shown right now in the live chat if you're following us live or if you're watching this in the aftermath replay, there will be a link in the description of this particular series. Just click on it and it will take you to our salvation tab, part of our website. You are going to be tremendously blessed. We will take your information and we'll follow up with you in a private academy of discipleship. God bless you. We love you and have a wonderful rest of the service. Amen.